So we shall start by embryology of the eye. And by embryology, we mean the science of studying the intrauterine fetal life and development and organogenesis of uh, the human embryo uh, till birth. Uh, in our part of uh, embryology, we are going to study the development of the eye and ethnics. The eye development actually begins at the third intrauterine week, the third week of intrauterine life. And the eye and its adnexa are derived from the three germinal layers. From the neuroectoderm, we can have uh, development of the retina, the ciliary body, and the iris, as well as the optic nerve. The surface ectoderm, which is the other division of the external layer of the embryo, gives uh, origin to the crystalline lens, the corneal epithelium, and the skin of the eyelid. The mesenchyme, or the extracellular mesenchyme, coming from the mesoderm, uh, gives rise to the neurocrest and uh, other structures, where the sclera, the corneal endothelium, and the stroma, as well as the blood vessels and muscles, develop. Now, there is a phenomenon which is very important to understand as it uh, gives explanation to all abnormal embryological developments that may occur in the human embryo. And this is the sequential induction. And it is a phenomenon that occurs in all organs that might derive from more than one layer of the embryo. Uh, the eye development is an example of sequential inductions where the organ is formed from the three different tissues. It's also called developmental cascades or the developmental waves. And from this induction, we understand that the development of one tissue is not going to occur unless, unless the development of the previous uh, tissue or organelle is uh, started. So, for example, for the crystalline lens uh, to develop, there must be the development of the optic vesicle and the uh, optic cup, as well as the embryonic groove. Otherwise, if the optic vesicle does not form, there is not going to be development of the crystalline lens, neither the following cornea and retina and so on. So one failure leads to failure. The neuroectoderm is the part of the ectoderm that is separated to form the neural tube. And as we can see here, this is a start. Uh, at the embryo, there forms two optic vesicles. And these two optic vesicles, we are going to see more details, are covered by the surface ectoderm. Here is the one in red is the optic vesicle. It invaginates inside out, just like a socket, for example, where a part of it is invaginated to inside so that it becomes like a two layered thing. This starting development is uh, the optic vesicle and then it becomes the optic cup with two layers. The outer layer forms the retina and the inner layer forms the retina pigment epithelium. The surface ectoderm then thickens in front of it to form the lens placode and then the lens pit and it invaginates to separate to the inside of the eye forming the lens vesicle. All this occurs with uh, a choroidal fissure, uh, just like a sort of a deficient part on the lower uh, side of the optic vesicles. So if we look at the neural tube, we'll see more photos to understand later on and more diagrams. Here is the surface ectoderm covering the neuroectoderm from which the neural tube and the formation of the central nervous, nervous system occurs. So this is a transverse section through the developing embryo at the beginning with the neuroectoderm to the inside and the surface ectoderm to the outside. On both sides, there start to form two vesicles, two small balls, 
These are called the optic vesicles and these form the future eyes. So the surface ectoderm, neuroectoderm to the inside and the formation of the optic vesicle. On the below side, there is a choroidal fissure, which is a groove at the bottom of the optic vesicle. And as I said, the optic vesicles invaginate to form the optic cup, where the tissue falls back on itself. The inner layer forms the retina and the outer layer forms the, the retinal pigment epithelium. Now, the middle portion develops into, the middle portion of the optic vesicles develop into the ciliary body and iris, and the blood vessels, which are mesodermal in origin, in a second wave, enter the eye through the optic groove. Please mute yourselves. I'm going to mute you all, I'm sorry for noise not to appear. Now, the surface ectoderm, we come back to the middle portion of the neuroectoderm, which forms the ciliary body and iris, and the blood vessels, which are mesoderm in origin, the second wave, enter the eye through the groove on the lower side and the optic nerves arise from the connection between the vesicles and the forebrain and this connection is called the optic stook and then lens is necessary to induce ectoderm to transform into the cornea this is the induction theory so formation of vesicles and then formation of lens and then formation of cornea if one fails the next will fail as well now the surface ectoderm thickens into the lens placode and the placode invaginates into the inside to become the lens fit. As you can see, thickening on the surface ectoderm. And this thickening invaginates again to the inside of the optic cup and separates like a small bowl, which is the crystalline lens called the lens vesicle at the beginning. We must know that the GTPase enzyme from the precursor lens ectoderm plays a very important role in its development. Now, these are real photos of embryos where at four weeks of life, this is the whole optic vesicle evagination from the forebrain. This is the forebrain where one vesicle comes to one side and one vesicle comes to the other side with a groove from below. As you can see on the second photo to your right, this is not a diagram, this is a scanning electron microscope photo at five weeks of intrauterine life where the bulge of optic vesicles, this is the optic vesicle, this is the on the right side, the body of the uh, embryo, with the formation of the maxillary process, MX, and the mandibular process, MN, and the vesicle. You can see how big compared to the small embryo, the eyes begin to develop. Now, the, at the fifth week, we, we said that at the third week, the eye starts to develop. At the fifth week, there is the invagination of the lens that I call the placode, which is a sort of a thickening and then the epithelium of the lens placode, this one starts to invaginate into the vesicle. And the NR is the neuroretina and the RPE is the retinal pigment epithelium. And the lens is so big and then the lens uh, separates to the inside of the vesicle with a small pore where the placode was formed and this later on seals. Now the embryonal lens nucleus is L inside with the fibers appearing to, uh, uh, to it, obliterating the lens cavity with vasculature around the lens called the tunica vasculosa lentis. This tunica vasculosa lentis later disappears as we all know that the uh, crystalline lens is avascular.
Now, the crystalline lens starts as a vesicle with a cavity, and then the cells that have evaginated into the optic vesicle start to form the fibers, and these lens fibers develop to the inside, become the secondary lens fibers, where the secondary lens fibers are to the inside and the primary lens fibers are to the, uh, in, I'm sorry, the uh, primary to the inside and the secondary to the outside. This is the late secondary uh, fiber stage. And at the adult stage, meaning at birth, the uh, uh, fibers meet anteriorly at what we call the lens suture, which is an erect Y shape and the lens fibers meet posteriorly at an inverted Y shape. These are called the lens sutures. These are very important to notice as to make sure that the development of the lens is sound and okay. So with development, the embryonal fibers are to the inside, compressed to become the embryonal nucleus, and then the fetal nucleus, then the adult nucleus, then the cortex, which uh, is to the outside. And as you can see, the capsule at the outside, anteriorly, the epithelium is still there, forming all the time lens fibers with nuclei that become compressed to the inside to form the nuclei. Now, this is a transverse section of a developing lens at 12 weeks. And as you can see, it's globular in shape with vasculature around. This is the posterior vascular lens capsule. And this is the triangular anterior suture that develops to become an erect Y shaped uh, mating points of the developing lens fibers to the inside, and this is the posterior suture. Now, the tunica vasculosa lentis, which is the vascular structure around the embryonic crystalline lens, and the hyaloid system of arteries, which is uh, invading the eye from the below embryonic fissure, leave remnants. These remnants we can see in most of our eyes, our patient's eyes, but none of them is visually significant. None of them affects vision. These remnants are the Mettendorf dot, the Bergmeister papilla, and the entire hyaloid artery. The Mettendorf dot is an anterior remnant, like a white round dot attached to the anterior capsule nasal and inferior to the posterior pole. I'm sorry, to the posterior capsule, nasal and inferior to the posterior pole. So the Mettendorf knot, you can notice it in some eyes, even on the slit lamp, which is the remnant of the hyaloid system of vessels and the tunica vasculosa lentis, seen like a white round dot, not central, but nasal and inferior to the posterior pole. And this is the explanation, the optical explanation that it does not affect vision. If it were attached exactly to the posterior pole, it would have affected much vision. Now, the Bergmeister papilla is the posterior remnant of fibroglial tuft of tissue that's extending into the vitreous for a short distance at the margin of the optic nerve head. This is a remnant of the hyaloid system of vessels. We'll see later on the hyaloid system. And the entire hyaloid artery, which is extending from the optic disc to uh, from the optic disc to the posterior pole of the lens, uh, may persist, and then it will be called the persistent hyaloid artery, and it might be either patent or occluded, and uh, may have, uh, of course, is bloodless. It has no blood in it, but has. Uh, uh, sort of a canal inside called the cloquet canal. So the remnants of the vasculature around the lens that disappear at birth might leave uh, uh, behind the Mittendorf dot, the Bergmeister papilla, and or the entire hyaloid artery. The retina at the beginning starts to differentiate into the known nine layers 
the uh, from the neuroectoderm of course uh, and the outer layer which is the retina pigment epithelium developing from the outer layer of the self-folded optic vesicle uh, that transformed into the optic cup. Now the newer crest. The newer crest is derived from the ectoderm, from the surface ectoderm. And it lies close to the neural ectoderm and it gives rise to the sclera, parts of the cornea and the connective tissue and bony structures of the orbit. So the neural crest is derived from the ectoderm. This is the third wave of development after the development of the optic cup, the optic vesicle and the uh, lens placode, uh, lens uh, vesicle and the lens. Uh, there develops uh, close to the neural tube, the neural crest, which gives rise to the sclera outside of all the of structures derived from the vesicle together with the cornea, but only parts of the cornea, which are the uh, behind parts, the back parts, the decimates membrane and the endothelium. And as you'll see, the rest of the cornea is developed from the mesoderm and the uh, ectoderm and the connective tissue and bony structures of the orbit. Now at seven weeks, after four weeks of starting development, this is how things look. The tip of the optic cup is the OV, vesicle, optic vesicle. This is the outer layer and the inner layer. And the primary vitreous is behind, and this is the very big uh, globular embryonic crystalline lens. And this is the lens epithelium, LE, and the starting cornea to develop, as we said, from the neural crest develops the endothelium and the decimates membrane. Uh, and from the outer ectoderm develops the epithelium of the cornea and the stroma develops from the mesoderm. So this is a section through the developing eye at seven weeks. Now, how the cornea develops? It starts by formation of the two-layered epithelium. We know, all know that the epithelium of the cornea is formed of five to seven layers, but two-layered epithelium only starts to develop at 39 days. That means be before the end of the sixth intrauterine week. Two-layered epithelium resting on a basal lamina separated from a two to three-layered endothelium by a narrow cellular space. The endothelium is coming from the neural crest and the epithelium is coming from the ectoderm. This is followed by the mesenchyme from the mesoderm at the seventh week, that is after one week almost, migrating into the space between the epithelium and the endothelium, which is the precursor of the corneal stroke. So the epithelium of the cornea develops from the ectoderm, the endothelium and decimates develop from the neural crest, which is developing from the uh, uh, neural uh, ectoderm and at the seventh week, the mesenchyme invades in between to form the stroma. And after half a week, fibroblasts from the mesenchyme are arranged in five to seven layers with appearance of collagen fibrils with the stroma increasing in thickness at three months, which is almost uh, 12 weeks, epithelium increases into two to three layers the stroma into 25 to 30 layers, more regularly arranged posteriorly, and the decimase membrane appears as, as a thin, uneven structure. And then comes the formation of the Bowman's membrane. And uh, if you remember when, when we read the anatomy of the cornea, and as you are going to study later on, it is a sort of a condensation of 
the outer layer of the stroma. So it is formed uh, by the uh, stroma. So Bowman's membrane and then the decimase membrane becomes well developed. And finally, the adult cornea at seven months is fully appearing. Now, the angle of the anterior chamber, and we now know that the outer layer of the optic vesicle forms the pigment, retina pigment epithelium, and the inner layer forms the retina proper, and its edge is where the mesenchyme starts to form the neural crest uh, with the formation of the iris and the posterior part of the cornea. And at this stage, at three months, there is a small canal that starts to appear, which is the incipient Schlem's canal with the scleral spare condensation behind. The sclera that came from the mesoderm, mesenchyme, is starting to appear. Then at six months of developing, the, uh, the iris dilator muscle appears and appears as extensions from the anterior epithelial cells of the uh, iris into the stroma and the sphincter muscles, the sphincter muscle of the iris as well appears. And at nine months, the iris is fully grown and the anger recess is fully deepened with its Schlem's canal and sclerosphere, where the angle is excavated. This is the anterior chamber, and this is the eyelid and the cornea. This is the angle. This is the lens epithelium. This is the vitreous. So the angle becomes formed as a recess at three months. And the corneal endothelium lines the angle forming the endothelial meshwork. And uh, this is the uh, future trabecular meshwork, as I said. And the blood vessels in the recess of the uh, pigment epithelium proceed forwards. Now, we come to uh, a collection of the information on the structures that develop from the mesoderm. The mesoderm contributes to the following structures. The extraocular muscles, like all skeletal muscles in the body, the endothelial lining of the blood vessels of the eye, the blood vessels in the sclera and choroid, the sclera and choroid themselves, and the uh, vitreous, the suspensory fibers, or the uh, zonial and parts of the cornea, which is Bowman's membrane and stroma. This comes from the mesoderm, while the epithelium comes from the ectoderm. So the cornea actually develops from the three layers. The first is the ectoderm giving the epithelium, mesoderm giving the stroma and Bowman's membrane, and the uh, neural crest uh, giving the uh, decimus membrane and the endothelium. Now the vitreous development and regression of the hyaloid system. The hyaloid system is the blood vessels coming uh, into the optic vesicle through the optic groove, the embryonic groove, the embryonic fissure, all names for the whole thing, or the same thing, sorry. Uh, at five weeks, the hyaloid vessels occupy the space between the globular big lens and the neural ectoderm. This is the primary vitreous. And the primary vitreous is here uh, being vascular, being vessels, is mesodermal in origin. This vascular primary vitreous reaches its, its, its greatest extent and development at two months and then the avascular vitreous comes from the periphery of the uh, hyaloid system of vessels. 
and it is of obscure origin, scientifically not known so far, whether it comes from the mesoderm or from the neuroectoderm. This is the second vitreous. And at four months, the hyaloid vascular system and the tunica vasculosa lentis, which is the vessels around the crystalline lens, uh, all connect with the hyaloid artery and start to disappear. And the tertiary vitreous forms the uh, suspensory ligament of the crystalline lens or the zone. So the primary vitreous is the hyaloid vascular system that disappears. The secondary vitreous is the known adult vitreous and the tertiary vitreous is the zone. Now the development of choroidal vasculature, we all know that the vortex veins drain the eye, the choroid namely, which is the uh, utmost vascular part of the globe. And we have the short posterior ciliary arteries and the long posterior ciliary arteries. At two months of development, precursors of the short posterior ciliary arteries, SPCA, and the long posterior ciliary arteries develop. Then several future vortex veins precursors start to disappear, forming the circle of Haler Zinn, the circle of Zinn of vessels around the optic nerve. And then at four months, tributaries of the vortex veins, choriocapillaries, and the large venous channels in the posterior choroid form and become drained by the vortex veins. Development of the ciliary body and iris, which is uh, the uh, anterior part of the optic vesicle. At four months, the meridional ciliary muscle fibers, which are uh, marked by this overread uh, structure here, this, um, I would say, circle, the red one around the meridional fibers appear at four months. And they are behind the angle recess the anger recess that we developed, that we uh, described, that uh, start to appear at three months. Then, <coughs> <coughs> sorry, the meridional ciliary muscles appear there behind the recess. And here, the red arrow is the aura serrata, which is the anterior part of the neural retina and the developing canal of Schlem that we described before. At six months, the meridional fibers become attached to the scleral sphere, which is the inner part developed from the sclera to share in the formation of the angle. And at seven months, one third of the pars plana covers the muscle. The pars plana uh, part of the retina develops to cover the meridional fibers. And finally, at nine months, the iris is developed, the angle is developed, pars plana is developed. Now, at 45 days, which is six and a half weeks, this is a section of the globe. As you can see, the lids are starting to develop, as we'll see later on. The uh, extraocular muscles are starting to develop from the mesenchyme. Hyaloid vessels has regressed at six weeks and the anterior chamber uh, pupillary membrane is still present as the iris is not fully developed and this is the hyaloid vasculature. The lids notice are not yet covering the eye as the cornea is not yet developed. Now the eyelid development, the timeline. In short, the eyelids form as ectodermal folds, and these ectodermal folds form in front of the corneal epithelium, which is from the ectoderm as well. These uh, uh, two folds are short. They do not reach each other. So the lid forms start to form at six weeks, and then at eight weeks, they start to close with complete closure at nine weeks, complete cellular actual closure, not approaching each other, but uh, fully uh, united together. And they then start to 
to reopen uh, and become fully separated at birth. And if this continues, it gives uh, conditions like uh, different ankyloblepharon and uropleferon and abnormalities like uh, the septa that occur between the two lids. So the eyelids start to form as folds at six weeks, become fully fused together at nine weeks, and then separate again at birth. Now we're finished from describing the different organs, tissues, and structures of the eye. And we described how they develop from the three uh, germ layers, the ectoderm, the mesoderm, and the endoderm. Now, uh, we are going to describe the regulation and inhibition of different structures, which is a very uh, complex process that depends on genetic expression. Genes develop proteins, express proteins, and proteins circulate and give the influences that we are going to describe. These proteins are the PAX6, the sonic hedgehog, the LMX1B, and vitamin A. We are going to describe these three, four regulatory proteins. The first regulatory protein is PAX6, six, number six, PAX6. Six. It's a protein known as the aniridia type two protein as related to aniridia if disturbed, also called oculorhombin. It's encoded by the PAX6 gene. So it's a gene expression that leads to the formation of this protein and it is a key regulatory gene in development of the eye. It either activates or deactivates gene expression. So the gene, for example, let's look at a genetic disease like aniridia. Aniridia may develop if the protein is activated at a certain uh, uh, concentration. If mutations occur and this protein is expressed in disturbed concentrations, this may lead to anterior segment abnormalities like aniridia and Peter's anomaly. So the PAX6 protein is uh, a protein expressed by the gene called PAX6, and it is a key regulatory in the development of the anterior segment of the eye specifically. Now, the sonic hedgehog. The sonic hedgehog, or SHH, is again a protein encoded by the sonic hedgehog gene. It's one of three proteins called the hedgehog signaling pathway. You know the hedgehog? It's the uh, the small animal with multiple spikes on its body. In Arabic, it's called humfuz. Um, and the uh, nomenclature is referring to their discovery in uh, hedgehogs uh, in research. There are three types of this animal, the sonic one, the desert one, and the Indian one. And each has got a protein named after it. And the, uh, the uh, sonic HH is the most important, most studied among the three of them. This protein expressed by this gene reduces the expression of the PAX6 that we described before. You remember, this is the PAX6. PAX6 responsible for regulation of the development of the anterior segment and the sonic hedgehog reduces its expression. So if it's inhibited, the expression of PAX6 is expanded and the, eye uh, the eyes fail to separate, causing cyclopia. You know the cyclope? The cyclope is an animal with a single eye in the middle of its head. Here. So uh, this condition may occur in uh, human embryos and it's then called cyclopia and it occurs when the 
uh, sonic hedgehog gene is expressed much, reducing the PAX6 and then the two eyes are uh, fused together, they don't separate. That is the both optic vesicles don't separate from, from the neural tube, but they develop, don't separate to the side, become just like one vesicle, and this leads to cyclopia. If it is overexpressed by itself, leads to loss of eye structures. So every protein has got an optimum concentration that uh, affects another protein or by itself affects the development of tissues in a regular cascade. Subhanallah. Now the LMX1B is again a protein secreted by a gene known by the same name, LMX1B. And uh, this one here plays a role in the development of the periocular mesenchymal survival. Uh, it's not the globe in the, the development of the periocular mesenchyme that develops the extraocular muscles, the rest of the uh, blood vessels, as well as the orbital structures. And finally, we have vitamin A deficiency that may result in defects in the anterior segment cornea and eyelids and the retinoic acid in the retina uh, restricts the invasion of the mesenchyme around the optic cup. Now we'll come to a video made by the BBC and it is showing how the optic vesicles as well as the face form embryologically. As you can see here, this is the surface ectoderm that gives three structures. The first in the middle is called the frontonasal process. It's ectodermal and filled inside by mesenchyme that forms the bones and the blood vessels and two other sides structures called the mandibular processes. So this is the, I'm sorry, the maxillary processes, the, mandib the mandible forms from the uh, branchial arches. So one in the middle above formed uh, from the ectoderm and mesenchyme called the frontonasal process and two to the sides called the maxillary processes. These, sorry, these unite at the philtrum of the lip. As you can see, if you look at my face, this area is formed by the frontonasal process, and this area is formed by the maxillary processes. So the midline is like this. It's not like this. All this from one structure, and these from two structures, they unite at the union line here. And this is where the uh, external angular dermoids occur. That is why external angular dermoids do not uh, uh, appear in the midline, they appear here. Let's continue here. This is the philtrum of the lip where the three processes form, giving rise to the eyelids, the nose, the upper lip, and everything. To the inside of this ectoderm, there is the process, the continuing process of development of the two optic vesicles that lead to the formation of the eyes. This is another video showing the development of the embryo, this is here just for the purpose of uh, knowing how other organs develop. Before the eye forms at the second week, by the way, this is an invertebrate embryo. The heart develops and starts pounding, starts pulsating at two weeks. And 
the limbs for Here the limbs are forming. And then the optic vesicle is forming and it's covered by the surface ectoderm forming the cornea and the lids form like folds. And these folds unite while the limbs are forming. Here, the lids cover the eye completely and unite together, closing the eye, as you can see, totally with fusion. And this has the effect of developing the uh, crystalline, crisp, clear cornea. And finally, the embryo is formed. Now, this is a rather very informative work that was done by, I am sorry, excuse me. I have to mute the video so that I can talk. Give me a second. Now, a Swedish photographer called Leonard Nilsson made this historic, uh, groundbreaking uh, work. He spent 12 years of his life taking pictures of the human fetus, not the embryo, the human fetus developing in the uterus. In this task, he used conventional cameras with micro lenses, but he aided himself with endoscopes and scanning electron microscope. And these are the results. This is the uterus, and this is the five to six days old uh, morula of blastocyst. At eight days, it became attach it to the uterine wall and the brain starts to develop as the uh, neural tube and then the optic vesicles start to, to appear on the side as you can see this is the optic vesicle to one side and this is the developing heart the red one with the embryonic fissure as you can see the embryonic fissure on its downside at four weeks. At five weeks, the frontal nasal process and the maxillary or maxillofacial process or processes, the two of them, development of the face. This is an actual photograph of an embryo. At 10 weeks, the lids are semi shut. They will close completely in a few weeks. As we described, this is important to understand diseases of the lids. At 20 weeks, completely closed. 24 weeks, the embryo is well developed. 26 weeks, six months, and the end where the embryo is born. Thank you very much for attending this lecture. And I can say we are finished with embryology of the eye. And I'd like to apologize for the roughness of this material uh, as this is the character of human embryology. It's a rather uh, rough, complex, uh, material, but very important to understand the clinical science. Now I open the floor for questions, uh, if any of you would like uh, to ask. I noticed that only one of the candidates has attended. <laughs> please, please don't don't open the microphones all at once. Uh, 
uh, who would like to ask? I can see only one candidate attending a Mirage. And there's an iPhone. Dr. Said, are you listening to me, Dr. Said Omar? Please unmute yourself. 